perspective, the world and me, it's uh, kind of amazing, if you will, to think of the small things, the amazing things that small things can accomplish. For example, if, uh, if you, uh, I've heard that you spend, if you save $1 a day, every day, through the course of a typical career, at your point of retirement, each dollar that you would save each day would render $200,000 of retirement thanks to compounding interest, that miracle of compounding interest. I'll have people say, Lonnie, I would love to read the Bible, but that just seems like I don't have the time for that. It's so large. But, you know, if you would have the discipline every day to dedicate 10 minutes, 10 minutes is all it takes. 10 minutes each day, you would be able to completely read the entire Bible in one year. And think about the great works of English literature. The great works of English literature was composed of the same just 26 letters arranged around to create language. And, and think of music, you know, Carl and Kosky Carmen, they're all they not, they're not just musicians, they also write. Carmen's in the middle of a new CD project. But think of what they're able to do. There's only 12 notes. 12 notes. 12 notes. Seven basic notes and five sharps or flats. And look what can be done with just a few things. It's amazing. While thinking and anticipating the big and significant things that can be done with a few small things, I thought last night when I was with Mercedes, we were on the, the deck and mosquitoes came up. <laughs> Think of what a tiny little mosquito can do. Well, Jesus carries that idea through in the gospel. We find in Matthew, Jesus actually talked about uh, something small. I gave two different illustrations of this truth. The first is that parable that we all know. We learned that in Sunday school. The parable of the mustard seed. Where Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven, remember he related the mustard seed here to the kingdom of heaven, is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his field and though it is the smallest of all your seeds, when it grows, it's the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and perch in its branches. Now here Jesus compares it to the kingdom of God, the mustard seed. And in that context, he's talking about the, the, the growing and the, the beginning advancements of Christianity. Now he was speaking at a time when there was just a few Christ followers, only a few were there, and they began to spread the gospel and we know how history plays out. Eventually, this kingdom grew to such huge proportions, encompassing the entire world and spreading over centuries. And then later, in the same gospel, if you go to the 17th chapter, Jesus, again, he talks about the small mustard seed. In this situation, he compares the small mustard seed to faith. He says, the faith of a mustard seed, say, even though it's the smallest amount, with that kind of faith of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. If you have just the faith of a mustard seed, just a little bit of faith, something marvelous would happen. Well, in mythical Palestine, a mustard seed was the smallest seed used to grow food. It was commonly used to illustrate something that was very small and insignificant, not significant. However, as Jesus said, when the seed was planted and it grew, it would become a towering plant. It would grow some 12 to 15 feet tall, about as tall of each of the trees to my left and my right. That's what you would find from one of those small mustard seeds. Both stories of the mustard seed, they do teach the same principle. And that is God 
can do a lot with a little. It just takes a little. That when it's touched by God, a lot can happen says, I tell you the truth, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And then there's that remarkable promise, and nothing will be impossible for you. Now, you need to work through what that means, that nothing will be impossible. But it's saying, hey, we have hope. What we do matters regardless of the size of the investment. I think a case can be made. And I guess you'd say, it's a case that I would want to make in this preaching moment. The case is that it is in the small, ordinary, everyday, routine, mundane things that God is reaching people with his gracious love. It is those small things. Like the small things we do in our lives. Now, by, by small things, I mean simple things like a kind word to a friend or another person you pass on the street. Or that attitude that we have when we work with a colleague or someone who's part of our mission team in ministry. It could be a simple prayer for a neighbor who's going through a rough time or, or playing games with the kids. They are all being used by God, I believe, to spread gracious care. And God is using this for big results of leading people to himself. I even noticed that even a short walk with our dog, Jake, who is a terrible arthritic behind, it means a lot to him. It keeps him close just going on that little walk. I do thank God, though, for the wonderful, big events, those moments that are filled with epiphanies at our critical benchmark in our lives, like the 20th anniversary last Sunday. Wasn't that a great time? It, it really, you know, we need those big, but, you know, that's not every week. Or it could be an anniversary celebration. Or time in which you were serious about your faith and saying, Christ, I don't want to be just an observer. I want to really be a participant in following you. Finding the right fellowship of believers that clicks with who you are. Getting married. Having children. Reaching a special birthday or anniversary. Graduating from school. Or getting that green job. These are events to be relished and celebrated. But the truth is, most of our lives are, they're rather ordinary, aren't they? There's those big events, but usually it's just ordinary lives. Yet in the ordinary, there's remarkable opportunities. God uses these things, I believe, to reach the human heart. The small things that we can do every day to edge people closer to him and to remind them of God's goodness, that kindness still exists in the world, and that moves us along. That seems to be what the Apostle Paul had as his conviction when he wrote to the Corinthian church. He reminded them of this. He said, you will be made rich in every way. So that you can be generous on every occasion, and through us, your generosity will result in what? Thanksgiving to God. Our generosity results in thanksgiving, not necessarily to us, but to God. Now, there's another thing about these small things, these small, simple things. Small things, unlike big things, they can be done every day. Every day. Looking out for people even in the smallest of ways, like opening a door for someone, taking a cake and giving it as a gift, maybe looking after the neighbor's kids for a while. They are ways that God communicates worth 
and value to people. The small expressions that lead to opening the door for people to meet Jesus. Paul expressed it this way as he wrote the church in Colossians. He said, therefore, as God's chosen people, clothe yourself with what? Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Those attributes, how much better our world would be if we just apply the simple teachings in the scripture. As I reflect upon it, upon my own faith, as I reflect upon it, it was people who brought me to my faith. People brought me to Jesus. The Bible did. Now hear me out. I knew what the Bible said. I, I was raised in the church. I was confirmed. I knew the Bible stories. I, I, I knew as, as, as a, a youngster and as a teen growing up, the, the, the key passages of the Bible. But what drove me and took me to the Christ wasn't the Bible necessarily, but was how it was exemplified in the life of others. How they took the initiative to care, to invite. I like that old story of, of the youngster who was going to bed and his mom said, okay, make sure you say your prayers. He said, I don't want to say my prayers and I want something with flesh on it. I can't see God. That incarnation that we have, that we live as a people, that people can see the Christ in this church. Well, there's another thing about small things being given in the scripture, and that is small things can actually be the tipping point in someone's life that can make all the difference in the world. You, you probably have heard that book that was published a number of years ago called The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. The tipping point is a term Gladwell defines. It says, he says, it is one dramatic moment in an epidemic, how about a pandemic, when everything can change all at once. Something comes together. Everything merges. It's the perfect storm for good. And his book and outlines how lots of collective small things contribute to resulting in one huge event or change. He talks about various tipping points. For instance, one is there's only one degree difference between hot water and boiling water. Just one boiling. A tipping point, when I think about it in my life, the tipping point made all the difference was a simple decision to go with a friend to his church for a youth event. He offered the invitation. Why not? There's nothing else to do as a teenager on Wednesday nights. Come with me to church. And that simple invitation that I saw in the life of someone I respected, someone I, I knew was authentic and real, not perfect by any means, but a real having it together person invited his faithfulness his small gesture of an invitation which by the way he drove to my house and picked me up and took me to church that's a big deal was the defining factor of following christ and then later on god called me to ministry from that tipping Wow, it ended up in massive results. Something you say or something you do might be the tipping point in someone else's life. Someone you know or someone you might just run into and you might be the tipping point for them to come to the faith. 
they will look at you and think, hey, maybe Christianity is worth taking a look at because I kind of like what I see in this person. It's a different kind of story. It's a different kind of value. It's a different kind of perspective from what I see on the news. There's something appealing there. Scripture reminds us of that kind of a tipping point. Elsewhere in Galatians, where Paul wrote this, he said, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. Another thing about small things. I really believe small things are a part of heaven's bigger picture. We all like big events, big concerts. I, I love seeing the Rolling Stones in a big arena. But I also like the intimacy of a small club. Small things can be a part of heaven's bigger picture. Small things really count. You count by the small things that you do every day. They count more than Maybe you even realize how significant they are. I would encourage you as a church, as a community, to look for those kinds of opportunities to engage in some small things. They're already there. You just have to have the eyes to look out for them. That every day with the people you know or who you may come across each day, know that God is using you, counting on you. God is counting on your life, your words, your smile, and your kindness. Ask God to help you see the opportunities and pray that God will help you to see the significance and what you often think is small or in unimportant. Remember, small things can have big results. The tipping point will come, and heaven will celebrate. Amen. Amen. Would you stand as we conclude this gathered time of worship and of inspiration there's a great old hymn of the church and usually we sing it around the holy week and especially on good friday and, and it's a great hymn it's near the cross jesus speaking near the cross it's, it's so beautiful i think that as we are closer to the cross we realize that there's something that we can do to help others cling to the cross. Our greatest ability is our availability to God. So let us sing this hymn as we conclude this worship, knowing that as we are close to the cross, we may therefore be closer to others in offering a word of hope and of grace. <laughs>